What's up guys? Welcome to another video. Today we are doing a 500 kilometer road trip in the BMW M3 Touring. First things first, let's pack this boot up. So I don't actually have that many bags, so this should be super simple. The bag that uh, BMW niece offered me that goes with the car perfectly had to be done. There we go. I'm not used to having loads too much space in the cars, but this is uh, ideal. Close this. Let's go. I can also, just a reminder, access the bags like this, see? Just by lifting that up, or, you know, you can open that completely. But yeah, it has loads of different ways of doing it, but the little glass, love that detail. Okay, in these seats, which should, this will be the real test to see if these seats are comfortable on a long drive or not. We're gonna have six hours. My phone is my key, so I just put this in down here. And then normally the car should start. All right. What's really cool is that it recognizes uh, the key, which is linked to a driving profile. So the car knows, for example, that it's me getting into the car. And so we'll put the climate on my preferred settings. It will put my seat in my driving position, all that stuff. So I've been looking forward to this road trip because one of the main reasons I got this car was to be able to do many miles in it. So let's, uh, Let's get started. Super convenient uh, for a long trip like this to have ways directly on this big screen in front of me, which is super visible because it's curved. You can see it really nicely. Now I've done 200 kilometers with the car already since I last saw you guys in this car. So I've gotten to know it a little bit more and I'll explain some of the things that I've learned about it thus far during this video. Whilst we're just driving out of town in Geneva here, two things that I have noticed while driving it mainly in town of three first is the suspension's pretty harsh on on this car now that doesn't bother me too much because uh, it's just making noises when it sees traffic lights or whatever in front loads of safety safety systems on this car but they're actually not too intrusive the suspension's fairly harsh when you're just cruising around town it doesn't bother me too much but if you're driving this as for like a real comfort car um, then maybe you'll notice that a bit more. Potentially, you'd maybe notice it less if you had the full comfort seats. Maybe these bucket seats uh, allow you to feel that a little bit more. I've never tried the comfort one, so I can't really comment on that too much. Personally, it doesn't bother me too much. Didn't really buy this car for it to be the most comfortable car in the world, so I don't really mind. If you're looking at this car in order to have total comfort, worth just considering. Turning circle, it is a fairly long car. It doesn't actually feel as wide as I thought it would. You know, when you see photos of it, you think of those big, wide rear arches, but it doesn't strike me and bother me the, the width of the car as much as the length and the turning circle, which is not terrible, but it's, it's also just not great, probably by virtue of it being such a long car. And one other thing, which is a shame on the touring, just to start with a few negative points, because it's basically just gonna be positive from here on, on out for the rest of the drive, I reckon. Who knows, may have a surprise. Cross fingers and that doesn't happen. One other thing is it is a shame on the touring that you can't get the panoramic sunroof or the carbon roof. So neither are an option like you get on the sedan or on the M4 coupe. You can get the, the carbon roof, uh, which looks amazing and also saves quite a lot of weight further up in the body of the car so I haven't driven it hard enough because I'm still in the braking period to really feel the, the weight difference but theoretically it then just brings the sense of gravity of the of the car a little a little higher up which for handling is never ideal but more than that just if you're in the back it's a little bit dark there's the tinted windows on this one it's just a little bit dark in the back because you don't have a big sunroof that will allow light to come in and so you know, maybe it can feel just a tiny bit claustrophobic. These carbon seats are quite thin though, so you have plenty of legroom in the back. Anyways, those are three things I've just noticed in the first 200 kilometers. I think it's gonna be a great cruiser though, because it's so relaxing to drive. It's quiet in here when you're in, I'm in full efficiency, which is, you know, what you'll drive it in. Uh, on drives like this, it'll be interesting to see what kind of MPG we can get. And just all the systems work really, really well. This screen is so clear, the head-up display is really nicely done, gives you just the right amount of information. It's not overloading you with things, but it's giving you what you want in front of you. The laser lights uh, as an option that this car has at nighttime are incredible. We're gonna be doing most of this drive at night, so that's gonna come in handy. Let's crack on a bit, and I'll catch up with you guys in an hour or so. And all of a sudden, 
for you guys at least, it's suddenly getting dark. One of the things I'm noticing, first of all, I am so relaxed. Uh, we touched on this on my first drive video. The uh, Drive Assist Pro Plus, basically the automated cruise control system, is unbelievable on this car. So it's so well calibrated, it's predictive, it's not kind of slamming on the brakes when someone pulls out in front of you and then re-accelerating out of nowhere and just acting in a way that you never would. I'm not a big fan of these systems usually because I feel like they're just too unpredictable, but it's just really nice on this. I've, I've been cruise control basically since I last spoke to you guys and uh, it's doing the steering mainly for me. I've got my hands on the steering wheel and I'm keeping my eyes on the road of course, but it, it basically is taking care of everything. So it's really relaxing for a long drive like this. One thing though that I am noticing is the power feels like, and I don't know if this is to do with the braking period or not, but the power feels like it's further up in the rev range. So often when I'm in eight, because it's an eight gear gearbox, automatic gearbox in this, it sometimes feels like it's a little bit out of breath when you're pulling over to overtake. So it'll just change down kind of two, three gears all of a sudden and you'll just take off a little bit when you need to overtake. Whereas maybe um, some other versions that are less calibrated towards high end power will have a little more low end torque and be able to pull you out from behind a truck or something in a slightly more natural feeling way. So that, I don't know, there may be to do with the braking period. I'm not sure if that's just um, unfair to be saying that at this point. But apart from that, I mean, just the sound system and everything is, is pretty unbelievable. We're going to stop to fill up in a second now. So let's see what my, this will be like a, basically a mixed use case because I I did quite a bit of driving in town to get out of Switzerland. And then now I've been on the motorway. So when I stop to fill the car up, we can check the trip thus far in terms of consumption and see what the MPG is. Okay, I've just stopped. And after quite a bit of faff, I've managed to find my journey information 232 kilometers three hours and 22 of driving and i've converted into miles per gallon from liters per 100 kilometers and it is 21.78 miles per gallon which is which is good it's not great it's good but 510 horsepower so for a 510 horsepower car that's pretty good i'll take it so let's fill the car up now see what the damage is see what kind of range it gives me and get on our way Right, exactly the same as on my first drive guys 105 euros coming out of a petrol station or of a toll is where we can start to accelerate a little bit nothing major because we're still in the break-in period of the car but still something I like these paddles that turn with the steering wheel they're big these paddles You can really feel that the car wants to go. You can instantly feel that the gearbox is in its most kind of sporty mode. I'm in M1 right now. If you want to see how I set that up, it's in my first drive video. So I do need to be careful because of this break-in period. That's why I'm not revving it too high, but yeah. I mean, the noise could do with some tweaking, I think. It's not bad. It has these burbles and stuff. I'm not sure how much of it is being filtered through the speakers and how much is real, but yeah, it's not, it's not terrible, but I reckon it could do with a little something. Uh, anyways, let's go back into road mode there. There we go. And then put it back into drive. And let's cruise. Cruise control back on. Now let the car do the rest. Ah, yes, I also forgot to tell you guys that I had 600 kilometers of range having filled the car up full. So, there you go. Let me know what you think in the comments. I had about 150 kilometers left when I stopped, but 105 euros in. Here we go. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Debrief on the seats then. Uh, well, after five hours of driving, these are pretty comfortable seats. I'm very happy to report back to you. I have been in far worse, and honestly, for how much they hold you in, they are just unbelievably comfortable. It's also got like an automated heated seat function. I haven't quite understood it, but basically it seems like 
when it gets a little colder in the cabin, it just whacks the heated seat on to warm you up a little bit. Everything is just quite smooth in this, even the climate control, you're not getting kind of air blown at you every five minutes to cool down the cabin or to warm up the cabin. It's just all quite kind of fluid, the way things happen. Same thing with the front automated headlights. So they'll go full beam when there's no one around, but then back to normal, just so instantly, as soon as I can't even just appear way down all the way over there. Again, really well calibrated. I don't know if I just haven't been driving in the latest, greatest cars enough, but it's pretty incredible. One thing, which again may happen on most cars, is if I leave my phone in the induction charger down there, it just completely boils and it's often then kind of sent my phone into cancelling my ways or can't calling, you know, stopping a call or things like that. So even though when you have the digital key as your phone, you have to put it down into the induction charger to start the car. You don't actually need to leave it there. And if you don't need to charge, I've been keeping it down in my door down there just because it seems to completely overheat when you put it in the induction charger. Really relaxing drive. You do get a little bit of a droning from the exhaust, tiny bit. That's maybe due to the fact that you have that kind of added boombox effect from the touring rear, but it's really not that noticeable. And the Harmony Card and Sound System is unbelievable, honestly, as an option. I haven't heard the standard system, which I'm sure is pretty good, but this one is fantastic, one of the best I've heard. It's got some fun trick little things like the ambient lighting or blink if you get a call, uh, which is completely useless, but kind of cool. Don't know about you guys, but I enjoy doing these types of drives at nighttime, I feel like. Less people on the road, it's quite nice to get into the zone, put your music on a podcast, do your calls and just cruise along. And we're back where we started. Okay, we've made it. Six hours of driving, same MPG as I read out to you earlier, and a fantastic first experience with my BMW M2 Touring. Driving back down to Monaco here, I'm now exhausted, it's very late in the night, and I'm gonna go get some food and some sleep. But guys, M2 Touring, for doing road trips i wish i could have stacked more things in here but we'll be testing the boot out in another video at some point it's fantastic this car so far pretty flawless thanks for watching this video if you want more content with the mt touring subscribe there's plenty more on the way see you soon take care Bye bye